Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. All right, so over the weekend at UFC 305 in Perth, um, one of the main card fights on the pay-per-view, Jairzinho Rosenstrike versus Tai Tuovasa, uh, a heavyweight bout, top 15 fighters. Um, they went at it on the feet, you know. They said that they weren't going to wrestle. They didn't wrestle. They just banged it out. And uh, it was kind of like a technical battle, you know what I mean? Like um, most of the rounds I, I would give to uh, Jairzinho just because of, you know, like him being able to kind of be elusive and, and land more and land the harder shots. Um, mm -hmm. But the the big story out of that is is the scorecards, right? So uh, one of the judges, his name is uh, – Howie Booth, someone that I've never even heard of before, um, he scored the fight 30-27 for Ty Tuivasa. Man, I love Ty. You know Ty. I know Ty. He's one of the most lovable guys you'll ever meet in this sport. But we got to okay. say facts, man. Like, there was no way that fight you could score 30-27. Like, what would you think of uh, the fight? Yeah, so, like, so I had multiple screens going on at once. So I was going back and forth because uh, the Craig Jones Invitational was going on at the same time. So I had UFC on my tablet. And then I had the Invitational on my laptop. Or no, the other way around, maybe. Anyway, but um, but yeah, it, it looked like the fight was definitely going in uh, Jairzinho's favor. So like, and I, I did like how it was... So this time around, I don't know if they've done it before. They might have. But you saw the names of the judges next to the scores, and that was pretty cool. Because mm -hmm. I know they wanted, like, the fans wanted more transparency um, with who decided to go with what score. And so if something was just, you know, even, let's say, like, even one or two months ago, if there was one judge that ruled it completely different from, you know, the, the other judges or something, then, then it would have been, like, um, what's it called? Then, then you would have looked at it and thought, "Oh, okay." Um, you know, some someone's just gone completely crazy. They weren't paying attention to the fight, or you know, they accepted, like in a worst case scenario, they accepted a bribe, so they wanted the other person to win. Because there's a lot of money that goes into, um, especially some of these betting odds, right? So, um, so let's say you you just get like a small cut of, um the underdog winnings or someone just bribes you a lot of money because then, you know, they've got like a plus 500 odd on somebody and they just give you like a hundred of that, then obviously on a bigger scale, then um, then that's a pretty big incentive for somebody to throw away a match or throw away a fight or, or try to rule it in favor of the other person. And so to have it with the name, with what they ruled in each round, I really like that. I really like that change. Yeah, um with with what you just said about like bribing you know we could go down a deep rabbit hole about that but that is always a possibility there is always a chance because these judges are not getting paid much to do this job and you know there's not much transparency you know there's a little bit you know like you said the names are up there next to the scores but you get the scorecards after the fight anyways like you could get them online so it's not mm. like you don't know who the judges are you just don't know what they look like unless you're at the show and you look at the like, most people are not looking at the judges right sitting in cage side oh that's the judge right there he's the one he's fucking howie booth or whatever you know no yeah, one really true. cares right yeah everybody i have no idea how howie booth looks like <laughs> Exactly. Nobody does, right? <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure people do, but we don't. Um, so mm -hmm. let, let's go over the scoring criteria, right? Because when you watch the fight, the fight was a stand-up fight. Like, they were striking the whole time. You know, there was a little bit of clinch stuff, you know what I mean? But mostly striking, right? And both these guys are strikers. Like, Ty's, you know, he's he's the, the power puncher, so-called brawler, right? And then Jairzinho has that kickboxing background. You know, he's more technical. He's he's more like he's more of a counter fighter, right? Ties the guy that will come in there and just smash you, right? So it was it was a good matchup on paper, I thought. Um, so when you look at the scoring system, this is what it is under the unified rules. It's like a ten point must system, right? So the first thing that you have to judge the fight on is effective striking or grappling. There was no grappling, so you have to put the striking in there right you look right. at the numbers Jairzinho's numbers were much better 
you know what I mean, then tie. So if you judge it purely on that, like Jairzinho's probably won every round very, yeah. very easily. Um, yeah. if, if let's say the striking or grappling was even, then you go to the next category, which is effective aggressiveness. Mm. Right? Like who's more aggressive? Who's initiating the action type stuff, right? Um, yeah, so who's attempting to finish the fight more? Right. Who's trying to fight, basically, who's not running away. And then right. if that's not something that you want to judge it on or not something, you'll judge, that, that's something that's kind of like even then you go to the last criteria, which is cage control or ring control. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you if you thought the striking exchanges was kind of even because some like maybe one of the rounds, it was fairly even. And then right. you had Ty pressing forward for most of the round then I can see how you could judge like one round for a tie, but judging mm -hmm. all three rounds for, yeah. for tie, it's, it's very, very, uh, it's alarming. Let's say yeah, like this guy was in there judging fights. Um, and then they took him right off the card. Like right after that fight, they, they did not allow him to judge any, uh, any more fights the rest of the night. Cause of course, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? If you're judging like that, then you're going to go into like these so-called more important fights and yeah. you might fuck it up, you know what I mean, for these fighters. Um, right. You know, it's, for, it's good that there's – go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say because, like, for, for how little they're getting compensated, the consequence of whether they make a mistake or not can be potentially massive because, like, these fighters are looking at six-figure paydays. Or, like, you know, if they show up for the, the fight purse to show and then to win, right? If they win, they double their money. And so that, that's a pretty big deal for, for the fighters. Mm -hmm. And so I, I get why it's, like – it can be a pretty, pretty serious, pretty emotional topic, you know, like for, especially for fans where it's like, this dude just got robbed. Like, I, so I get that. Yeah. They should do this more often, I think. And, you know, and they should do it all around the world. It doesn't matter where you are. They should just like, if, if there's something fishy with the fighter or with the judge, mm. like even one round was just kind of like, what, you know what I mean? Right. Like you, you gotta like say, okay, let's pull him out. Let's put a new judge in there because you just you just don't know what's going on. You know, what I mean, there's always kind of like whispers about, oh, you know, bribery and, you know, like fight fixing and all these things. Yeah. And that's that's serious allegations, man. It that is. You you're throwing out there. If 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 we started to like name names and like started to like make accusations. Right. It's it's serious, dude. It's like, you know, that's kind of, you know, without evidence. It's it's something you should never do, to be honest. Right. With you. Yeah. Yeah. You got to really do your homework if you want to go after like a judge or an official like that. And, you know, like it's it's damn near impossible to find evidence, I'm assuming, of it, you know, unless you get like screenshots of like their messages or something. You know, if someone's like, all right, I'm, I'm giving you like 15 grand if you swing it in the direction of like the red corner or whatever for this one fight. Like it's like, you know, how are we going to pack that like? Um, from a realistic standpoint, you know, it, the logistics of actually catching them red handed seems pretty tricky. If, if that is the yeah, case, because in, in the history of like mixed martial arts and MMA, I don't think there's ever been any scandal involving judges at all. I don't right. believe so, right? And I've been watching it for a long time, but there has been in the past where fighters. Yeah. have been caught up in some issues right and even with the james Krause thing, we don't know what's going on with that but that there's fight fixing stuff going on there gambling you know insider information all of that those things are going on so we don't know exactly like what's going on with that case right now but we know that he's banned from yeah. coaching from okay. being at events from even have, like i don't even think he has a gym anymore oh wow yeah, there's, there's like proper movies that like are made out of this like very specific premise, right? Usually it's in like the form of boxing or something mm -hmm. where the coach would be like, hey, there's a lot of money if you take a dive and lose this fight. And then, you know, the, the boxer just secretly places a massive bet on himself or whatever, like, mm -hmm. you know, anonymously. And then he just knocks the other guy out anyway and then takes the money and then just runs with it. And they're like, well. Yeah, what was it? Uh, Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Remember in Pulp Fiction, um, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis mm. was the boxer. Yeah. And then, yeah, remember exactly. that part in the movie? And he knocked out the guy because he didn't want to lose, but he was paid to lose. 
And then he's sitting in yeah. the back after the fight. He's like running away with his like girlfriend or whatever, right? So there are, like you said, there are movies that kind of have those uh those topics, those issues, you know, intertwined. But the thing is with the judging, man, uh, it's it's hard to like. It's hard, man, to to. It's hard because we could criticize them a lot, but man, are they really like knowing the rules? Are they really, do they really even know like what fighting is? Like, do they really know what a significant strike is? Like, because sometimes you see the scorecards and you're like, what the hell are they watching? You know, I mean, even like the dumbest people in the world, like, like your, your wife or girlfriend could sit there. I'm not saying they're the dumbest people in the world, but they probably don't know much about fighting and they could watch the fight and say like, Hey, that person clearly won. Right. But then it says that this person won, you know, these split decision controversies. Yeah. And there's probably, there's probably just unconscious bias just from being in the game for so long. If you've been officiating for years, right. And like whether, and it's like whether your mind or emotions wants to play it or not. Right. Like I'd imagine some people just pick favorites without thinking. And so if you got, Mm -hmm. if you got a fighter, you really, really like versus a fighter that's, you know, that you think is an asshole. Um, and like you try your best to officiate it fairly, but if it's like super, super close and you've got to give it to one person, I'm assuming you're going to give it to the one you like, you know, for like, or at least it's going to tip it in that favor. And so um, there's probably like, un- unless you can get a machine to, um, to just, you know, look at significant strikes at face value or whatever and somehow calculate those exchanges um there's there's probably very little officiating that is 100 percent uh free of bias that's i would imagine that's impossible i saw something online where they posted howie booth so you know you can see who he is and they're saying that he's like very involved in the gyms I think he's from New Zealand or something, and he's involved in the gyms and something in, oh. in the community outside of judging. You know what I mean? Right, like, right, yeah. it's it's hard to, you know, the thing about MMA, it's just so small the world, right? So there's yeah. like people people always talk about like, oh, you know, this person shouldn't do it because of this, because there's so many conflicts of interest, Absolutely. right? It's extremely yeah. so many conflicts of interest. Like even myself, you know, like me trying to me interviewing fighters, like I have to like approach it from a neutral standpoint. Right. And I do Uh all the time. Right. But then I still slip up during interviews. You know what I mean? I'll say like certain things that sound like I'm like, you know, boasting them or like pumping Mm. them up. Right. And and, and because I know them a little better than I know maybe their opponent. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's just me, my mistakes, but like, but that doesn't affect the outcome of the fight. Right. 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 It does not. Right. So, but like these guys, you know, it's, it's it's everything's a conflict of interest, man. I'm serious. Like like Absolutely. managers, fighters, coaches, they're somewhere somehow they're intertwined, right? Like fighters yeah. training at this gym and then leaving the gym and going to this gym, and then now they're fighting against a fighter from this gym that they were at before. And there's a conflict of interest there because the coach, right? He might have been tight with that fighter, and this fighter's a new fighter from the gym, and then they go in there. You never know, right? You just don't know. You just have to like have faith in the people around you. And that's why like certain gyms are so close knit because of this reason. And they don't allow people in. Right. Dana White was on, uh, he was doing the press conference today from uh, the the contender series. And uh, Marab had posted a a, posted that he got cut and he's like three weeks out of his fight or something like that title fight against Sean O'Malley. And then Dana White just exploded. And he's just like, we have the dumbest people in the UFC. <laughs> it's like, why would you post that? Uh-huh. You know, like he's, you know, he talks a lot of shit about boxing. And he said, like, you know, I talk a lot of shit about boxing, but at least in boxing, when you have a training camp, nothing leaks. If something happens, mm-hmm. it stays in the camp, right? Unless you like have a mole or boxing. something. Yeah. But in MMA, everything's like, oh, let's put it online. You know, like. I right. got a cut, you know, I got, you know, I hurt my leg today or, you know, I'm icing my nuts or something. I don't know. Right. But like it, it, it mm-hmm. there is something to say about that. But, you know, with with the, going back to the judging is I don't know if ever it's ever going to be fixed. I don't think it's ever going to be fixed at all. Right. Yeah. It's going to be this way. Yeah, I think I, I no think idea. that. Right. I think that transparent in the moment. Um judging is a, or scorecards are about as as close as we can get to 
um, to something that, you know, at least holds the judges accountable. So if nothing else, like if they weren't taking their jobs seriously already, at least now, like, you know, there's another reason to take their job seriously because there's a number that's attached or there's a name that's attached to a number that like millions of people are going to see in the moment. Um, So like, at least that's that, but I, I wouldn't have a better guess as far as um, how we would actually improve that further. It's, I it's think like, we should have more judges because they don't get paid that much anyways, right? Mm, I think yeah. we should have two more judges. Uh, my 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 idea was like you should have a judge for each criteria, so they're Ooh. only judging the criteria that they're looking like at. That. So yeah. like one judge is one judge is uh, scoring effective striking and grappling, one judge mm-hmm. is scoring effective gr- aggressiveness, and one judge is scoring cage controller, wing controller, whatever you want to call it, right? Or if you have five judges, you have one judge on striking, one judge on grappling, one judge on, you know, cage control, one on aggressiveness, and then you have one overall. Like, they're just looking at the whole fight as a whole, the whole round, and just scoring it on that. And then you could kind of get a better understanding of, like, what that round looked like, you know? But I'm just talking shit, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's probably not, you know, financially feasible, even though right. these commissions make crazy money. True, true. Because then, like, the, the big events would be able to do it, but then, like, the local ones would be like, how the heck do we get, like, five judges, six judges, seven judges for an event? But where, some like, regional like, shows, they have five judges for, for yeah. their events. So it's it's all it's all up to the commission or whatever the, the event mm. is. But, you know what I mean? And and also, you know, kind of tied into this is, like, there's some new rules that they've, they're going to implement in November is, number one, is uh 12 to 6 elbows will be allowed now oh, in cool. fights which was kind of stupid like it never it was illegal before you know like uh, if you went this like this way it's illegal but if you went <laughs> this way it's not illegal like what what are you talking yeah. about right yeah, but they weird. finally fixed that and then also cool. the uh grounded opponent like you know oh that's you're right playing yeah. the, the tripod game or whatever you know what i mean like now yeah, yeah, yeah. People you're aiming it so that you can't get kneed or kicked in like a certain position where like your hand just barely touches the ground because you're trying to win by yeah. a DQ, yeah. basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're playing that hot potato, like <laughs> with, the, with, with the ground, you know, with the mat, like yeah. hit me, no, and then you're like, oh, I got hit. Like we've seen it before in in fights, mm-hmm. right? But I yeah, think those absolutely. are good good changes. Uh, also, I think, but the thing is, like, they need to put uh, they need to put the knees to a grounded opponent in there, like. If you're on the ground and you're in side control, you should be able to knee your opponent in the head. Like, to me, it should be legal. Yeah. Because side control doesn't really exist in MMA anymore. Don't you notice that? Right, yeah. It's mostly um, top half guard. Or, like, half you have guard. to... Yeah. yeah, so, like, in, in, in the top position, you have to be in a spot where you can kind of pin somebody down with your legs. So, like, top half guard actually makes more sense than, uh, than top side control. Unless you have their arm and, like, you know, like a crucifix or, like, a shin pin or something. Mm yeah so yeah that's i think the commentators were talking about that it's like half guard is like unless you're really good in that position most people don't want to be in half guard because it's it's an easier position to escape compared to uh you know uh, not half guard a uh, side control compared to half guard right side control mm-hmm. is a little bit easier to escape right than uh, a yeah. uh, half guard and i can right. see why because there's certain people that could get in half guard you cannot get out of it and you're just getting pounded out with punches and elbows right yeah. it's a good position to be in um but yeah like judging man howie booth he should probably never judge again 